Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Ford with Forley Friday podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about the importance of healthcare for your dog and how to navigate um, vet services and what you can do to ensure that you and your dog are comfortable with the veterinary care that your dog receives. So first of all, um, it's important to look at what uh, the guide dog school that you received your dog from or that you may be receiving a guide dog from offers in regards to vet care. Um, this varies pretty widely. Some schools uh, offer like a no interest loan to help with the cost of vet care if needed. Others offer an entire vet care package. Uh, some schools will allow uh, clients who live local to the campus to take advantage of the um, vet clinic that is operated by the guide dog school. Some schools have their own vet clinic, so if you live local, you sometimes can take advantage of that. So take a look at what your school offers or what a school might offer you if you choose to get a dog from there, and uh, that might help you in um, answering some questions about how you're going to take care of your dog's health needs. Now, of course, vet care is very important. Uh, a guide dog is sort of like an Olympic athlete, and they do best when they are both happy and healthy. So it is really important that you take vet care seriously and that you make sure that your dog is receiving um, all the care that they need so that they can um, help you with your travel needs. So some things to look for when looking for a local veterinarian. This is a perfectly acceptable way to get your dog uh, vet care. In fact, many people use this system because it's, it's more convenient than trying to go to a guide dog school, especially if the campus is not where you live. Um, so just having a local vet is is important. Word of mouth is huge. Being able to talk to other people and get their recommendations on what's been a good vet for them. Um, just like any other business, word of mouth goes a long way, so it's important that you take the time to talk to others about what might be a good vet in the area. Uh, you can also go into a couple of veterinary clinics and just talk to the staff and kind of get an idea of what they offer and what um, it's like there kind of and you, you know what impression you get from the staff there are they friendly are they not um, do they seem well organized um, you know are they open convenient hours for you so take you know take some time and do a little bit of research on a vet clinic that might be best for you I, I do recommend trying to, to to get the best care possible for your guide dog. I mean, they're, they work pretty hard. They love what they do, but, you know, it's a physical job. So it's important that you do really, in my opinion, get the best care you can for your dog um, within the confines of your budget, of course. So what sort of things should you be doing uh, with your veterinarian? Well, um... First and foremost, you want to make sure that your dog is seen on a regular basis, at least once a year, like a physical exam. For humans, kind of the same thing. The dogs have that, and the veterinarian will check your dog from nose to tail. And you also want to make sure that your dog is receiving the appropriate vaccinations and boosters, making sure that all of that information is kept up to date. Um, that will help of course, with the health of your dog. If you're going to be doing any sort of traveling, especially internationally, you will want to make sure and get um, the appropriate vaccinations for your dog and that they stay up to date. Uh, and even if you travel domestically from one region of the country to another, uh, you want to make sure that your dog is, is um, up to date with all of their shots, vaccines, um, meds, that sort of thing, just in case there might be something... Uh, different in, in another region of the country that you might not uh, normally experience where you are currently living. Uh, also, preventative medication. Um, you want to 
be aware of that. And this can be done either through a guide dog school or through a vet clinic. It really just depends on the specific guide dog school. Uh, the kind of standard examples of uh, preventative uh, medications would be um, heartworm prevention as well as flea prevention. There are a few different products on the market for each of these. Um, I will not give specific examples. I'll leave that up to your veterinarian slash uh, guide dog school. They can help direct you um, for the appropriate um, type and brand of medication. Uh, and again, these are preventative. So these ensure that your dog uh, does not get heartworms, which um, can be very dangerous to your dog, uh, as well as fleas. Your dog is going to be uh, traveling in public and all kinds of public spaces, and it's important that they stay clean, especially if they're around other dogs. You don't want you know fleas getting transmitted or any other sort of um, illnesses getting trans transmitted. So it's, that's why um, pr both preventative medication and your vaccinations are important um, to to stay up to date. So when you're working with a veterinarian, uh, it's important as well to let them know that you are visually impaired and um, to develop a system um, for them to describe um, procedures and, you know, administration of medications. So if your dog, you know, is sick or something happens, maybe your dog gets an ear infection and you have to administer eardrops, let's say, you want to make sure that your vet understands that you can't see so that you and the vet are going to have to come up with an alternate solution. Make sure the vet is explaining everything to you and that you fully understand what is going on with your dog. Uh, if there's symptoms or signs, um, behavior that you should be looking for as a result of either side effects of medication or um, to help the vet determine whether your dog's um, health is increasing or decreasing, make sure that you and they understand um, fully what you're able to detect. Uh, so if it's something visual, uh, let's say they tell you, you know, look in the ear and see if it looks red, well, you might not be able to see that, so you might have to find another way. And you can say, um, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not able to see um, what the ear looks like. Is there a tactual way? You know, can I feel, like, is there a temperature change, or will a dog start doing something more abnormal, like shaking their head or, you know, scratching or something, um, you know, to help determine that this is, um, you know, a sort of an indicator of, of the health of, of, you know, of the dog. So work with them on that and just, you know, kind of self-advocate, explain what you need, explain your needs, your capabilities, what you're comfortable doing, um, and especially with medication. If you're not comfortable um, following a established procedure or administering any sort of medication, um, if you're at all uncomfortable about that, let the veterinarian know and don't do it. Um, the last thing you want to do is to be administering meds or following a procedure that you're not fully comfortable with. Um, that could cause a lot of bigger problems. Um, for example, if, if your dog needs to receive an injection uh, on a temporary basis, maybe, you know, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, maybe you request that the, you know, that staff at the clinic help you with that. You just stop by, they, you know, administer the injection for you and you go on your way. Um, again, this is going to depend on your comfort level, your experience with animals, uh, and so just make sure and inform the vet uh, and the staff of what you're capable of. It's also good to go in ahead of time before your dog needs to be seen. Um, oftentimes, uh, guide dog schools will provide you with a medical history of your dog from when they uh, trained at the guide dog school. So you can take that and the um, vet clinic staff can enter that into their database. They can kind of get to know you, get to know your dog. Um, of course, you can explain that this is a guide dog um, and, and that sort of thing. And that will help in case of an emergency, you're not trying to, you know, enter information about your dog while your dog is, you know, having an emergency, you can just go right back and, and get things taken care of. So it's always good to establish a veterinarian ahead of time. Uh, it's also good to, uh, to have an emergency vet um, 
in your area, you know, be aware of an emergency vet practice just in case it's after hours, it's late at night, it's on a Sunday, something like that. Um, you know, make sure you can, if you can't get to there uh, yourself, that you, you know, have a designated friend or a couple of people on a call list that can help you in, in the, uh, you know, event of an emergency so that your dog can be seen, you know, quickly. You don't want them to suffer. You know, you know, if it's something really bad, obviously, you know, they need to be seen right away, just like, you know, if you had to go to the emergency room at a hospital. You want to make sure that you um, establish that for yourself. And also, if you're going to be traveling, if, you, if you're visiting family, say, in another region of the country or, you know, in another state, and you go there on a somewhat regular basis, um, you may not necessarily have to go into the vet clinic, although that, you know, that could be helpful, but at least, you know, um, develop an awareness of a couple of local veterinarians in places that you visit on a relatively frequent basis, uh, just in case something happens while you're traveling. You'll be able to uh, have your dog seen and uh, it'll be a lot easier for you to get vet care while you are on the road. So we talked about uh, some services that different guide dog schools offer in regards to vet care. We talked about um, what um, you should look for in uh, a vet practice. We discussed you know, how to educate the veterinarian staff uh, on what uh, is helpful to you as someone who's visually impaired. We talked about establishing um, records ahead of time with a local vet uh, as well as an emergency vet um, so that if something happens, um, you're ready to go. It's a lot easier for you and your dog uh, to be seen. Uh, so uh, this is going to conclude uh, this podcast. I hope you liked what I had to say in this episode. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next podcast.